Hi Year 4, here we are again for the third time this week with our coordinates grid. If you're just joining us with these videos, have a look at the two other ones I've put up first. One that shows you how to plot coordinates, one that shows you how to plot coordinates that will make a shape. And this one today is going to be about translating shapes. Now I'll explain exactly what I mean by that. But to do that, I need to start off by plotting some coordinates that make a shape. I'm going to go for 2, 2, 5, 2, 2, 4, and 5, 6. So drawing those up. You need to use a ruler because you won't be holding a camera in your other hand, so you can use a ruler. Let me put my coordinates. So I had 2, 2 on the bottom left, and I had 5, 2. And I had 2, 4. And then I had 5, 4. So far, it's just what we've been learning all this week. How to plot coordinates and how to join them to make shapes. Polygons. Now, translation is when you move a shape to somewhere else in your grid without twisting it without flipping it over, without any doing anything fancy to it, just moving it from one place to the other. And you use coordinates to instruct your move. Whenever you're translating shapes, I think it's a really good point to choose one coordinate that's going to be your key mover. It'll make sense in a minute, but I'm going to choose this guy here. Putting a little circle around him because my instructions are going to be to move that shape, to translate it three right and five up. Now, what do I mean by that? Starting with this guy, I want him to move three right. I can't remember what I said now. Did I say four up? I'm gonna write it down. <laughs> three right, four up. I'm really sorry if I said something different earlier on. I didn't write it down. Three right, four up. I'm going to move this guy three right. One, two, three. But he doesn't stop there because he's now got to go four up. One, two, three, four. Now I'm not actually really drawing anything on my page, or I'm trying not to, because it's not the line that he took to get there. It's the destination that he arrived at. So the corner of my rectangle needs to end up here, three right and four up. But it's not just one corner on my rectangle, it's the rest of the shape. But now that I've got this little guy drawn in, I know that his right hand side is two up. So his right hand side is gonna be two up. I know that his bottom line is one, two, three along. One, two, three along. And because he's a rectangle, he's got parallel and equal long sides, parallel and equal short sides. Now the whole shape has moved three right and four up. I could choose any of my coordinate points and they should follow this instruction, three right and four up. Let's test this one, three right and four up. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. He's ended up there. He started there and he's ended up there. Let's test this one, three right and four up. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Brilliant. He started there and he ended up there. I'm going to test the last one, just check it. Does it also move three right and four up? One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yes, it does. He went from here to here. Now to translate a shape, you always go along the corridor before going up the stairs. So we definitely fo followed that rule. Let's try this one. 
this time I'm going to put my original shape all the way up here. I'm just going to make it a double square rectangle. And this time I'm going to want to move it. Hmm. Five right, five right, and this time three down, three down. So I always start with the x-axis movement, and then I'm going with the y-axis movement. Five right and three down. Now, just like before, we're going to choose one coordinate point to try first. And again, I'm going to choose this bottom right guy because he was really helpful last time. I'm going to move him five right and three down and then see if the others follow. Five right and three down. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So he's going to end up down there. Now I could do the same with this guy. Five right and three down. In fact, I will just to show you that it works. Five right and three down. One, two, three. Four, five, one, two, three. He's going to end up there. Let's check this guy. Five right and three down. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. He's going to end up there. Hopefully, you can see really clearly where the last corner was going to end up. We can even predict it because we know how to turn three coordinate points into a rectangle because we had a go yesterday. So I know it's going to end up here. Now, a week ago we looked at area and I told you all about how I used to be a rug maker and how maths was really useful for that job. Now again, we could think of this maths as being helpful in the real world. Imagine this is my customer's front room and they said they wanted a rug that was four by three. So that's four by three foot. Four times three is 12. Let's check we've got an area of 12 square foot. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Good. A 12 square foot rug. And they want it to go in front of their fireplace, which is down here. But imagine that they decide they want their rug moving to somewhere else. They might want it up here in the corner instead, so they can have a little cosy corner to read. So they might say... I want my rug, my three foot by four foot rug, to end up right up here in the corner. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So I've got the same shape, the same area, the same size, but I've translated it to a different part of the room. Now, perhaps... My customers are on holiday and they're telling the uh, telling the the son in the house, the child in the house, can you move that rug please to the corner of the room? And the son's saying, what do you mean? Tell me exactly where you want me to move it to. You've got to be clear here, parents. So they might need to give them coordinate instructions to move it from here to here. And they don't want to be vague. They don't want to just say, oh, move it up a bit and to the right a bit. They want to be precise. They want this coordinate to end up right here. So what movement instruction would they need to give? How many moves to the right and how many moves up does that corner of the rug need to go? And the rest of the rug will follow it. So you tell me how many moves to the right and how many moves up? Did he say three right? 
And did we say six up? Good. So the whole rectangle shape translated from here to here needs to go three right and six up. We can check the other corner points. Three right, one, two, three, six up, one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. That one ends up where we want it to. So you can have a go at drawing some polygons on your coordinates grid and deciding where you'd like to translate them to and you could even plan your whole sitting room out with the furniture that you've got or your bedroom you could make a little map of where your bed is and your um, cupboards and chairs that you've got or rugs that you've got and you can translate them around the room. Now a really important thing here is translation. The shape never twists or flips. So this would be incorrect if I said I've translated this shape and it's ended up like this. That would have been a bit of rotation as well. And we're not learning about rotation just yet. Translation, this shape needs to stay kind of exactly as it is. It can't rotate and it can't flip. Hope you've had fun this week. Send me everything.